So hello, my name is Baujan, and I'm glad to see you today on this presentation about Ezer, a Debian-based product system um, built on Bitbake. So today we are going to see um, which problem we wanted to solve, how we solved it, and how this compares to other approaches. A couple of words about us. We are a small team of uh, developers, and we help companies um, implementing Linux in the right way. And uh, doing this, we also contribute to Linux kernel and other open source projects. So Linux uh, is very attractive for building embedded <coughs> systems. And uh, what we wanted to have is a product build system with one command on demand building that produces complete um, ready to use firmware images. So you start one command and uh, it produces some image. You flash it and it works. No post processing involved. We are not in the business of um, creating a Linux distribution. So uh, what we definitely want to avoid here is uh, building our own distribution or massively uh, modify um, some existing distribution. That is why it, is, uh, it has to, to be a low of effort. Um, we reuse as much upstream as possible. And we have also efficiency in mind. Um, this means after the whole thing flies, um, it has to um, work quickly. Some use cases that we wanted to cover um, was adjusting upstream packages, build several products from one repository, um, share components between them, and uh, use with several, uh, work with several vendors that provide um, code to us. There are also uh, specific customer requirements um, that we had to fulfill um, in the system. For example, um, native compilation. So we started with cross compilation and ended up with native compilation. Uh, we have to have security updates. Um, typical um, products are maintained more than 10 years. Uh, so one legal aspect here um, for some industries uh, we have 10 years after end of life. And also legal clearing um, of the licenses. So basically, there are many systems that are suitable for embedded use. Uh, two huge candidates are basically Debian and Yocto. So uh, let me see who is using Debian. OK, who is using Yocto? Yeah, that's great. So um, I think we can um, proceed with some slides quickly, because uh, you will know already um, how it works. So this uh, green carpet is only for your information. Um, to emphasize which features of, a, of the Debian distribution uh, we were it, interesting for us. So this was a very conservative version selection so that we have a mature pre-tested results for our systems. Um, license clearing, so um, every package in Debian um, has clearly specified um, licensing and uh, also in uh, last versions, uh, it's even machine parsable. Uh, Long-term maintenance, 
security updates from upstream. And last uh, and not the least, uh, the usage scales uh, between individual projects and uh, product lines. Um, one thing um, that we are missing there is the one command on demand building on the whole project. Uh, it's not out of the box. So um, the processes to do that are not quite standardized. Well, the alternative is Yocto. It is uh, like uh, 10 times smaller than Debian. It's a source-based distribution. This means that you have to rebuild the tool chain and the, uh, all the packages from scratch um, for every developer. But it does provide one command on demand building of the whole project. Um, it has Bitbake, which uh, provides modularity and uh, full customization of the build process. And uh, it also has layers, which provides uh, collaboration between vendors. Also, um, what is different from Debian, as it is a source distribution, you can fine tune your tool chain and your uh, build flags to exactly match the platform um, that you are using. So if you can see, uh, since Debian, for example, is pre-built, uh, you have to choose basically from two variants, uh, either it's Armel uh, with a pretty uh, low architecture version, no FPU, uh, more or less a, a lowest uh, common denominator of ARM systems, um, or um, ARM HF, which uh, uses uh, high architecture version and uh, vector floating point uh, with 16 registers. Uh, why I'm mentioning this? Uh, because, for example, uh, some uh, socks uh, are falling between these two. For example, uh, the sock of Raspberry Pi um, is um, ARM architecture version 6. It has vector floating point, but with 32 registers, and it only has thumb. So this uh, variant you would have with Debian, you would have to uh, uh, use with Armel. Okay, so um, what we did is uh, to combine the advantages of both systems. Uh, we use Debian binary packages uh, and use Bitbake to um, generate the root file system and to build our own packages. So ESR stands for uh, Integration System for Automated Root File System Generation. Um, and um, also we do reuse the workflow and uh, layering structure of the Yocto project here. So at a glance, Ezer installs Debian binary packages as a base system. Uh, it builds and installs our own applications, drivers, libraries, whatever, and creates the images. Uh, it consists of a set of scripts, um, namely Bitbake recipes to do that, um, and uh, ships also a product template so that you can copy it uh, as your project and start um, developing your product. So where uh, is it useful? Basically, uh, we see it uh, of use on any Linux-based embedded devices, uh, especially um, if you want to share components uh, between the projects or even departments or business units. So benefits are easy code reuse and uh, quick, automatic, repeatable builds. 
Well, we started uh, in 2004 uh, with a Siemens Linux distribution and a shell script that uh, builds the whole thing. Um, after some products uh, changes, we have seen that um, this approach doesn't scale and switched to BitBake. And uh, the last year, uh, we decided to move to Debian and started open sourcing things. So from here, we can see that uh, I'm definitely late uh, open sourcing the, the whole stuff, but I am doing this hereby. So how it works? We basically have five steps. Uh, the things here are external repositories and uh, the boxes uh, represent uh, the steps and on the right side we have the um, outputs of every step. Uh, so first what we do, we, we create a, a change root environment. It's an ARM or a target change root environment. Um, it is created automatically by the tool. Uh, then we clone our packages, our custom packages, um, build them uh, natively with uh, Debian infrastructure. It means uh, DeepKG build package. Uh, and this produces um, Debian packages, binary Debian packages. This is run uh, in the uh, target change root uh, under QEMO. In this way, we avoid cross-compilation um, of the packages. Um, after that, we create the target root file system, um, make customiza customizations to it, uh, install our packages, and create the target image. So the target <coughs> image may be a simple file system image, or it may be um, a complete partitioned, for example, uh, SD card image. <coughs> so this we already know. BitBake uh, is a build system. It uh, provides recipes, or we provide recipes for BitBake. Recipes are files. Files contain tasks and recipes are organized in layers uh, that group uh, different recipes together. The whole thing, the set of recipes and configuration files uh, is called metadata uh, to distinguish it from um, the proper software like uh, yeah, coroutils uh, and so on. So here we see um, how, um, what, what you get after you clone the um, Ether repository. You see BitBake, the interpreter. You see Meta is the core layer. And Meta Ether is um, the product template that you can use um, for your products. And there is also an uh, init script that uh, pro prepares a uh, build directory just like um, in Yocto. So to give a feeling um, how um, recipes are um, organized, um, they end with .bb and they contain um, variab variable and uh, task definitions in a shell-like language. It's bitbake language, it's not shell. Um, and uh, the task definitions um, can be implemented in shell or um, in Python. So what we see here, here is a variable that defines uh, which packages we want to pre-install um, in our uh, build change route. And uh, this is the uh, task body which um, actually creates the change root. <coughs> the 
I think we can skip uh, some slides uh, and return to them later um, after we see how the whole thing uh, works in dynamics. So we see here our repositories. So we need to have Debian apt um, repository. We have our applications, drivers, libraries. There are many of them. Uh, we have a copy of Ether core layer and the meta product layer is um, our uh, product. What we see here um, in the boxes, these are the same boxes uh, as in previous slide and we see some dependencies between them um, which means that Bitbake can um, start with a task in parallel. You see here uh, some boxes are uh, numbered with one. These boxes do not have um, dependencies and they um, can be started in parallel. Uh, the boxes that do have dependencies have to wait uh, till those tasks are finished. Uh, for example, four to three means uh, do populate um, of image building depends on do install um, of application recipe. In this way, uh, tasks can be parallelized um, and at the same time um, they um, wait if it is necessary uh, for the results of the previous operation. So in this way, for example, uh, we generate a um, bootable um, image um, on a PC with a hard drive uh, like in 10 minutes. So what, what we currently provide is core framework and template and an example to build um, several images um, from one repository. The use case behind this is first we had a board that was used uh, with some SOC. After some years the SOC was end of life and we moved the board to another SOC. Um, and also we added other boards using other SOCs. Um, this was our motivation uh, to provide this variability. So this example uh, provides two products, product A and product B. Product A uh, runs on QEMO uh, and Raspberry Pi and product B runs only on QEMO. Um, and they share basically 90% um, uh, of their components. Only the different parts um, are built separately for every product and for every board, which is called machine um, in uh, Bitbake parlance. What is the peculiarity here is that uh, Raspberry Pi um, uses its own distribution, Raspbian, and uh, we provide different build change routes for each. Okay, so some uh, examples how we use it. Uh, these will be very familiar to um, Yocto users. Uh, we clone our um, ESA repository, we change into the directory, we initialize um, the build environment with source um, command um, and it automatically changes into the build directory. You can use your own name uh, of the build directory and then we say bitbake and image name. Uh, we can also specify uh, several images here, however in that case uh, syntax uh, gets a little bit uh, more complicated uh, as in the last line of the callout. This is a new feature uh, in Bitbake that was merged um, in September. 
So what we want to do uh, is to uh, develop our product. We are using Debian as our base system and we have an application that we want uh, to install on the uh, system. What we have to do is to create a repository for that. Uh, we name it uh, hello.git um, in this example. The sources um, have to be Debianized. You can do this uh, with, for example, dhmake. Um, and uh, it will create the Debian directory with templates that you can edit uh, to generate your, uh, a Debian package of your application. And then we have to create a recipe for our application. So we specify where we get it from, which um, commit ID we want to use or tag name here, and then we inherit a dpkg um, class that builds um, the package, the binary package from the sources um, with dpkg build package. After that, uh, we uh, list our package name in image install and it will be uh, installed um, in the file system. So a couple of words um, about classes. We can um, extract the tasks that are repeatedly used uh, in recipes uh, into classes and put them in specific uh, directories um, in our layers. Uh, and then uh, if we say um, inherit class name, it will be reused um, in every recipe we would like. So we have a, um, an overview here, what kind of classes uh, we have uh, in the core layer. So dpkg uh, class uh, builds binary Debian packages from a uh, Git repository. Uh, we also have some image classes uh, that depend on each other uh, to create images. For example, ext4 image uh, creates uh, an ext4 file system image and uh, image bb class is a generic class that uh, uses, uh, for example, ext4 image uh, to generate uh, one partition of the whole image. So to create a new product, um, what we need, we copy our template to our meta product. Uh, we add packages, we add boards that are called machines, um, and we add or modify images. So a couple of words about uh, layers. We can group different recipes in layers. Uh, this, is, this can be seen as a group of recipes um, that has a name um, and uh, is organized according to some code ownership um, or um, origin or function. They are usually called metas for metadata and they must be configured uh, with a player configuration file. So this file uh, lists um, among other things uh, where to look for the recipes. Okay, so um, an example, how to override um, an upstream package. So quick and dirty way is to um, do that in the image recipe so that after the uh, whole uh, file system has been installed, we just uh, hack some files uh, directly there. 
um, the clean way would be to um, assign this or to attach uh, this change to an existing package. So what we, uh, the current way of doing this is forking the respective package and uh, doing the change there. Uh, for example, if we want to uh, modify init tab um, from upstream, we fork the whole uh, CS5 init and we do our modification there. Of course, only for one modification of one config file, um, it is uh, an overkill and uh, what we envision is to patch um, the source um, Debian package without um, having to fork the whole package in our um, repository. So this could look like this, um, that we uh, specify um, the Debian source uh, package as uh, the source URI. Uh, we provide the MD5 sum and we provide our patch here that uh, patches the respective file and then installs it uh, as a package. So our package, our modified package, um, has to have a different version um, than the Debian one. So we see here this is the uh, Debian version, um, the upstream version, and plus my project two is my modification. So I start with my project one, my project two, and so on. So how we uh, could typically develop um, our products? Uh, first, we have to um, produce uh, something working at all. So we create repos for our uh, components, Debian, applications, Ether, um, and so on. Because we want to be able to rebuild everything uh, in the future also for an older release. Um, that is why, for example, uh, we uh, make an internal company, Debian Mirror, um, and archive it also with the whole project um, so that we are able to do this um, also after years. This is also re a requirement, uh, for example, for uh, any safety certification. Then. We develop our applications, what makes our product business logic uh, in our, um, for example, app.git masters. And if we need to change our um, upstreams, uh, we fork this in like package.git, um, but not in master, but in branches. Uh, the reason for that is that uh, whenever we want to update this package, uh, it will be updated in master and we will create um, our new branch um, to develop this further. Then we tag all uh, components and we tag, uh, we use these tags in our recipes in meta product and uh, tag uh, the whole meta product. So this becomes our uh, 1.0 release. We can branch from it and uh, maintain it further. And in master we have then um, the development um, branch and uh, we can proceed with the same procedure uh, with the only difference that uh, whenever we have to um, update some upstream package, uh, we update it in master and rebase our 1.0 changes uh, in some another uh, 2.0 branch um, and tag the respective uh, stuff again. Uh, so here uh, we see that uh, whenever you modify anything, this effectively becomes your code and you are responsible uh, for maintaining it. So uh, the goal is to minimize um, the number of packages that you have to fork and therefore maintain. So if we follow this uh, 
steps, then we can uh, build an older lease uh, in the way that we check out our ether uh, or our product repository uh, with the tag that we gave um, at that time and uh, call BitBake uh, with that revision. Of course, for this to work, we have uh, to specify um, source revisions in the uh, recipes um, in the correct way. So they, they have to be uh, not branches, but tags or uh, commit IDs. So the whole idea uh, behind um, layering is uh, collaboration. So what we, what we can have here um, are some both support packages from one vendor and some libraries or codecs from another vendor. Um, our own code uh, that is product specific or our own code that is um, shared at the department level or at the company level. And uh, we do this explicitly uh, by assigning a different meta uh, for every level of development. And then um, we have to think uh, who is responsible for that because we can uh, fetch Debian source packages, we can modify all of them, uh, but after that when we have to uh, provide version 2 of our product, uh, we have to think, uh, okay, uh, how much would it cost to update uh, these old packages uh, to their new versions. So the rule is uh, to avoid change, uh, massively changing upstream code and uh, if possible uh, to override um, the small changes in your own meta. Ah, yes, and also if there is uh, some shared stuff between uh, two products, um, it can be put into the department meta or um, into the company meta. This is also then strictly separated also from either core, which can then also be updated uh, and independently from company's own stuff. Okay, so we are actually ahead of time, so I can show a couple of um, levers we can use in either. So what we have in our core layer is um, global BitBay configuration. It co contains mostly paths, uh, but it is important to know that uh, it is copied uh, by um, build environment initialization script um, into the build directory, and it includes local configs um, to create a single global environment. So this means that anything that is specified uh, in any configuration file um, all recipe or recipe is has a global scale, uh, scope um, and uh, yeah is globally visible. What is also created in the build directory uh, is BB layers conf. It is created from the sample that is provided in the product template layer. Uh, and uh, among other things, it lists the BB layers uh, that will be used to uh, build the system. So after you add um, your own layer, you want to remove uh, the meta either here and to add your uh, meta product layer um, to this configuration file. And there is a configuration file for local, let's say, uh, what I call local uh, developer level um, changes 
uh, it's called local conf, and you can specify um, variables there um, to tune the build process. For example, uh, by default, BitBake creates uh, only one image, and of course, this one image uh, has to be uh, targeted for a specific board. And this is specified here. Uh, for example, the default machine in local conf sample is uh, the ARM QEMU machine, and it uses uh, Debian Visi distribution uh, to, for build truth and uh, to bootstrap it. Um, also, we have image install setting here, which lists all packages that we want to have installed on the target. So this means uh, if I create uh, two drivers and uh, three libraries and one application package, I list them all here uh, and then um, they get installed. Unless, of course, they have interdependencies between them, then I don't have to list all of them or I can do this also. And uh, the further setting is uh, bitbake number of threads. If you have a multi-core CPU, then you can uh, set this to a higher value and it will uh, build, it, it will start um, that number of threads. So how we build our distributions, uh, we have a distro directory in the product uh, layer uh, which contains uh, our different distributions that we uh, want to use because it may happen that uh, one product is using an older Debian release and a newer product uses uh, the next Debian release. So then you would have, for example, Debian Visi and Debian Jesse here um, and uh, they will be uh, respectively created two different build routes and uh, two different uh, target image um, root file systems. The same thing for machines. So what we call machine is basically a board uh, that our hardware is based on. Uh, usually there are settings like which U-boot sources and version to use here, which kernel and so on. In this way we can have the same product uh, for three different boards that are based on three different socks and use different U-boots, different kernels, uh, but the same application, the same business logic. Okay, so um, where we are now? There are, of course, alternatives to these approaches. This is not the only approach. Uh, one talk we had today in this room was about uh, embedded Linux build environment. This uh, is a project with the same goals um, as of Ether and uh, it's a, it produces similar results but has a different philosophy. So uh, the Main difference is that uh, it has only one uh, file, one configuration file uh, per product. And if you want to use, um, if you want to generate several products, you have to um, use several files. It uh, provides many features out of the box. Um, yeah. The other approach is MetaDebian. It also uses Debian and uh, BitBake. However, this is a different uh, time, type of project and uh, it has different focus. So as I see it, um, this is a um, Debian-based source distribution um, that can be used to um, create Products. So Ether um, uses a pre-built distribution like Debian or MetaDebian uh, to build products. And MetaDebian is in the business of uh, creating that very distribution. So there are also uh, many other tools that do this. 
Uh, there is also a quite entertaining, uh, entertaining presentation uh, by Riku. Uh, you can have a look at that. And what he says is basically is each tool is tailored uh, uh, for the developer's use case. Um, and what I can add that uh, product development uh, is more than creating a root FS. So to summarize uh, what we do and what we do not. We have uh, small tools for well-defined tasks. These small tools have uh, small configuration files. Uh, they are uh, not consolidated. They are divided and have dependencies between them uh, to provide variability. And we try to reuse as much as possible, for example, Debian binaries and also familiar tools of uh, Yocto and uh, their workflows regarding layers. Because after you have layers, you have to um, actively think, yeah, OK, uh, who is responsible for this code? Do I want really to uh, maintain stuff myself if I modify this? Uh, and if I do, how do I do this uh, for the version 2.0? These are um, questions uh, to answer um, if uh, you are concerned about costs um, during release 2.0. Well, last but not least, uh, we uh, design things uh, also with performance in mind. So we try to parallelize uh, the whole stuff uh, just from the beginning, um, because uh, at the end, uh, this will cost developer time um, to wait for builds. OK, so um, there are some ideas where to go further, what uh, to do. After that, um, one of uh, the um, points is or there are two actually major points um, related to Debian building. One is to be able to build um, Debian source packages and uh, to put the binary results back to, the, to, to an apt repository. So this uh, will be, uh, would be a major uh, thing um, once it would work. Uh, after that, of course, one could always optimize the thing uh, to see if a package was already built and provided in the app repository. Um, then we could uh, skip building it. Another thing um, is about Bitbake, uh, because currently we have to specify dependencies um, in BitBake Recipes 2. This means we duplicate uh, dependencies that are already specified in Debian specific um, control file. Um, we duplicate them in the um, recipe. And um, here I haven't studied the, the subject um, in detail, but I envision creating a um, DSC or Debian source uh, package backend uh, for Bitbake uh, that could possibly understand the DSC files directly and in this way uh, that would be a direct alternative uh, to <coughs> BB um, recipes. So you are invited to, to try the stuff, uh, to provide suggestions and uh, of course patches. What we are also interested in is uh, collaboration with other projects uh, like uh, MetaDebian and Elbe. Uh, let's see um, how it goes. So to summarize, what, what we get uh, if we choose either, we get a quick project startup because uh, many people are familiar with the tools. We get a product template with default images that we can quickly reuse. Uh, we provide 
the basic recipes uh, necessary uh, to build the system. So you have only to add your own recipes and um, it will just work. And it works quickly. And also um, layering is very important to, um, for the collaboration um, with vendors and with the community. So you clearly specify from the beginning in which layer you put the stuff and um, it forces you to think um, about um, further releases um, from the beginning. So here are the references. We have code on GitHub, we have user manual, and uh, for now we have, uh, we mm, uh, invited to communicate on Debian Embedded uh, unless there are objections. And uh, in the future we will see whether we uh, provide our own mailing list infrastructure. So that's it about ESAR. Any questions? Yes, we do compile in. Um, do I have to create this myself, or is it done during the process? No, it's uh, created automatically by by the build system. So you see uh, here. Uh, this all all this what you see here is done automatically, and the the very first step here is to create a. Uh, change root that is then executed uh, under QEMU. Okay. Right? Excuse me? Or uh, I don't remember how it's called. Uh, QEMU static. QEMU. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is currently the same change route. So this means um, if we have two distributions, like one Debian and one Raspbian, then we create uh, one Debian change route for building and one Raspbian change route for building. So we don't rebuild the clean room change route uh, for every package. We reuse the same build change route for the same type of distribution. Is there any cleanup after the build? Uh, build of package A kernels don't affect build of package B because package E wants to write some temporary files somewhere that affect the build of package B? Well, uh, actually, it shouldn't happen. But we haven't specifically looked uh, at that. So till now, we had never problems. Uh, with that, uh, either with Debian or with Slint. Um, that's why we, we haven't um, looked into that. Yeah? So how do you envision or currently handle the, the final bookable image product? So are you considering or are you using Vic for this already? So what the Yocta community is doing there probably will do even more in the future? Or is there more a Debian way to go this? Well, currently we don't use Vic, uh, and uh, it's, uh, let's say, a matter of changing the recipe. Debian uh, provides uh, several alternatives for this, uh, um, and uh, we actually do this uh, right now, let's say, uh, manually in our recipe. So, but uh, it's actually a good question of policy whether we want to proceed with Debian solutions or with WIC. Uh, we have to do a more detailed evaluation here. But uh, for my, uh, my feeling is that uh, WIC is probably going to uh, get more acceptance than existing Debian tools because Debian um, has a very rich uh, tool 
um, environment, but uh, it is concentrated about apt and building and uh, DPKG and so on. It's not very um, embedded oriented from my personal opinion. Okay, so the first question was uh, whether it's possible to build an SDK. Well, this is an SDK, and you can build your own SDK uh, uh, that you, you build your own layer with your own files for your developers or for external developers. So the answer is yes, you, you can, and this is what actually this uh, tool is about. So you don't have to end up with uh, images. You can provide a... Uh, let's say, a half of the solution to your users um, in form of um, SDK. And uh, regarding uh, timestamps and caching, yes, they are used. So if a developer uh, built the system once, the packages are cached and uh, they are not rebuilt uh, in a successive build. Well, currently what we do is a uh, git clone of Ether. Okay. And you have uh, meta Ether there, and this is a product template. So if this is an acceptable delivery form, then you can do this, or uh, perhaps you want to elaborate. Ah, okay, so the question is how I distribute this uh, layer. Yes. Okay, so if you don't uh, want to distribute it uh, via, let's say, Git or whatever, you can always pack it into some uh, zip file and uh, provide it. Uh, I'm not aware of uh, any Yocto ways to do that. There is one. Yeah, and it is? Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can look at that. That would be an interesting idea. So I haven't looked at that till now. The question is how generic this infrastructure of Yocto is, and then you can just reuse it by plugging some pieces together and you just get the same thing. No. So I think it would be more strange, maybe. Currently, I don't see any obstacles uh, that would uh, speak against that. So for, for me personally, it would be interesting to do. That's a good point because um, we don't provide a tool chain. We use a uh, Debian native tool chain. And uh, in the end, if you want to build an SDK, you will be providing this part, or let's say, this is, what, uh, this is your SDK. But uh, this, this, and this you won't be providing. So this uh, has to be provided externally. And uh, for example, what we do uh, for our company builds, uh, we duplicate, for example, external repositories uh, like Debian uh, internally in-house. So it's a good question um, how one could proceed here, because uh, in this way, uh, Yocto is self-contained but at a price that you have to rebuild everything from scratch. And Yocto runs, in theory, uh, on any distribution. 
In practice, uh, there are issues uh, with systems that are not tested that much. But uh, our approach is to reuse. Then the question is, of course, then we pack the whole Debian stuff into it, or we assume you have somehow access to, to this stuff. So this is a good question, and uh, I think we will not uh, have a one size fit, fits all answer for, for every customer. Because one will say, I don't want to duplicate it because we have it in internet, and the other will say, yeah, okay, uh, I want to have it whole completely here. Yeah, but it comes from, from repository, that's the problem. So the compiler, uh, it comes from Debian Apt. It's just a native standard GCC of uh, that particular but Debian distribution. Runtime, enabling to run it doesn't come from Debian. That's what you should, that's the, the creative environment. And scripting around this, what LD is also doing, provides a wrapper and all that. Okay, 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 now I get it, okay. So you are talking about setting the host build environment to be able to run this. Uh, well, the standard answer is uh, we assume that you run Debian. Any Debian version, it doesn't matter which, but uh, you have the tools that are necessary uh, to bootstrap the whole thing. Um, of course, for our different distributions, uh, what we currently do, so one developer of us is using Fedora for that, and uh, he uses change root. So it works. But it's a good question um, to discuss um, how to provide this uh, out of the box, let's say. Oh, excuse me. Uh-huh, okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, I haven't tried it. I, I'm not aware of that feature. I'll uh, discuss this with our Yokto Guru, and uh, it, for me, it sounds definitely interesting. Okay, if uh, there are no more questions, then thank you.